Hello students, in this video we'll see how to compute the area inside a cardioid and the arc length of a cardioid. So cardioids are special polar curves. We're going to consider the polar curve. Consider r equals 1 plus the cosine of theta. This curve is called a cardioid. Okay. So what does this curve even look like? Well, it's, with polar curves it's always good to plot a whole bunch of values. So of course, what happens when, let's do some values over here, so when theta is equal to zero, for example, when theta is equal to zero, that says that r is going to be equal to what? When theta is equal to zero, cosine is zero, so r is going to be equal to two, so I'm over here at two. And then when will this curve return to the polar, when will this curve hit zero? This curve will hit zero, for example, it's going to, when theta is pi over two, for example, theta is pi over two, then that will say that r is equal to one, so over here at one, that's two, so one's maybe over here, for example. And then what will happen? So when r is equal to pi, when theta is equal to pi, that will say that r is equal to what? Well, that's going to be a negative 1 plus 1, that's going to be a 0, right? So when theta is equal to pi along this direction, 180 degrees, we're going to be back at 0. So what's going to happen is this cardioid is going to look like this. It's going to go up, come over here, hit like this. And now I can notice that if I reflect, if I choose, if I allow theta to be negative theta, the cosine doesn't care because the cosine is an even function. So I know if this is my function f of theta, then f of theta is equal to f of negative theta, f of negative theta. So I can just reflect this over the x-axis. And there we have it. That's our cardioid shape. And it's called cardioid because it resembles a heart. So if I reflect this over here, it looks like a heart. So that's my cardioid. I want to answer two questions about this function. I want to find the area inside of it, and I want to find the arc length. So let's find the area first. So what's the area? Of course, I had to do a whole what? I went from 0 up to pi, and then from pi over here all the way back to what? All the way back to 2 pi. So my range of theta for this cardioid is theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. That's my range for my cardioid. So let's find the area. How do we do so? We use the area formula. So the area is 1 half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the function r squared. So I'm going to have a 1 plus cosine squared d theta. That's the area. And so let's compute this. So what will I get? I'm going to have a 1 half integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a 1 plus 2 cosine of theta plus cosine squared of theta when I FOIL it out. But I'm going to immediately use power reduction on that. That's going to be a one, uh, 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta all divided by 2 d theta. So I use power reduction here. So this term over here is exactly equal to cosine squared of theta. So I just FOILed this out. Excellent. And so when you're doing these polar integrals, when you're finding areas of polar curves, um, you oftentimes want to use this power reduction identity because you're squaring lots of trigonometric functions. So it's important to keep this power reduction identity. If this was sine squared, that plus would turn into a minus. So very important to keep that identity in the back of your pocket when you're doing these calculations. Great. All right, so now let's integrate this thing. So I have a total of what? I have a total of 1 half. And then what? And then I'm going to have an integral of, I have a 1 and a 1 half. That's going to be a 3 halves. So I have 3 halves of theta. And then I have a 2 cosine theta, the antiderivative of that is going to be 2 sine of theta. That's easy to check because the derivative of 2 sine of theta is going to be cosine theta. Then I have this cosine of, of 2 theta over 2, and the antiderivative of that is going to be a sine of 2 theta over 4. So plus sine of 2 theta over 4. And then theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. Great. All right, so what's going to happen over here? What's going to happen is when I plug in 0, I get 0, 0, 0, so the bottom limit is nothing. When I plug in 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi and the sine of 4 pi are both 0, so the sine terms are just going to cancel out entirely. And so what we're left with is we're left with 1 half times 3 halves times 2 pi. And so we can cancel out one of these 2's over here, so I'm going to get 3 pi over 2. So the area inside this cardioid over here is 3 pi over 2 is the whole area of inside that cardioid. Beautiful. Now other cardioids, if you have a different, if you put a number if you put a number a in front of here, what's going to happen to the area? The area is just going to scale by a squared. So if there's a if there's a scale factor of a outside, you're just going to multiply this corresponding thing by a. Okay? The calculation is exactly the same. You're just going to be able to pull that constant out. Now if I want to find the length of this cardioid, what do I do? So the length we have to use with the following formula. So for length, the length is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of what? Of r squared, so 1 plus cosine of theta quantity squared, that's r squared, plus r prime squared. And r prime squared is going to be negative sine of theta 
quantity squared, d theta. Of course, we can use symmetry over here. I can just integrate between what? I can integrate between 0 and pi and double it, right? So by symmetry, this is twice the integral from 0 to pi, the square root of what? Well, let's see, I'm going to have a 1. Then I'm going to have a cosine squared and sine squared. That's going to be another 1, so it's going to be a 2. 2 plus 2 cosine of theta, d theta. Okay, excellent. Now, this looks a little bit, uh, a little bit messy, but what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to pull out a square root of 2 over here, so I'm going to have a what? This is going to be a 2 root 2, 2 root 2, the integral between 0 and pi. And then we have the square root of uh, 1 plus cosine of theta, d theta. Now, I'm going to use this power reduction trick, but in reverse order now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multi um, manufacture a term I want over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a over square root 2, and I'm going to have to multiply it by a square root of 2, so I'm going to square that to balance things out. So that's going to turn into a total of a 4. So this is going to be 4, the integral from 0 to pi, of the square root of 1 plus the cosine of theta over 2, d theta. And by power reduction in reverse order, what this is, this is going to be 4, the integral from 0 to pi, of the square root of cosine squared of what? Cosine squared of, well, how do I go from here to here? So this, the cosine squared is, is half of that angle, so it's going to be a theta over 2 d theta. So what I have over here is the answer is going to be 4, integral from 0 to pi, of what? Of the absolute value of cosine of theta over 2 d theta. Okay. Now what's the important thing to remember over here? The important thing to remember is that between 0 and pi, the cosine of theta over 2 is going between 0 and pi over 2. Now, the cosine between 0 and pi over 2 is non-negative, so I can get rid of the absolute value. This is 4, integral from 0 up to pi of cosine of theta over 2, d theta, right? An antiderivative of this is going to be what? It's going to be, sine, it's going to be 2 sine of 2 theta, so this is going to be what? This is going to be 4 times 2 sine of theta over 2 from 0 up to pi. When I plug in pi, I get a 1. When I plug in 0, I get a 0. So a total of what? The arc length of this cardioid is equal to 8. So the area inside this cardioid is 3 pi over 2, and the arc length of the cardioid is equal to 8. Thank you very much.